This instructional companion on rolling wheel dynamics falls under the major topic, Dynamics and Vibrations, which contains the following five chapters, Properties of Solid Bodies, Kinematics, which we've talked about uh, in other uh, instructional companions, Kinetics, where this one comes from, Mechanics and Power Transmission Systems, and Vibrating Systems. The chapter on kinetics, which is just a formal textbook name for dynamics, so I like dynamics a bit better, um, contains a lot of topics that you see here. Uh, the main ones here, we're going to be talking about the motion of a rigid body, a rolling wheel, uh, and um, supplementing what is in the MERM on constrained motion. So. I've titled this instructional companion Wheel Dynamics, but actually uh, I'll be using the term rolling wheel uh, dynamics, and we had rolling wheel essentially kinematics. There was one on velocity and one on uh, acceleration, and what I want to do is review those quickly here. Uh, this is the one for velocity, where we have uh, velocity of the center of the wheel titled V, v sub C. Uh, we've got an angular rotation omega, a radius R, and the no slip condition down here at point Q. Uh, Q has a uh, velocity of Q equals zero, so therefore if we look at our uh, motion, we got VC to the right and uh, R omega back to the left, so uh, VQ equals zero means that uh, VC, velocity at the center of the wheel, is R times omega, so that's one of our basic fundamental uh, properties or fundamental kinematic uh, relationships. Well, let's look at acceleration. Well, for acceleration, we have the velocity of the center of the wheel. If it has an acceleration, a sub c, uh, possibly, of course, you'll have an omega if it wasn't rotating. Alpha is the angular uh, rotational uh, acceleration. And uh, down here at point Q, well, you have a no-slip condition, but that is that the uh, AQ, um, e uh, sorry, AQT, is equal to zero. That's sort of the correlation to the um, velocity at Q being zero. And so if you put on here our AC, remember our relative motion, A sub C, and back to the left is R alpha, but there's this uh, leftover R uh, omega squared, which is AQ in R omega squared. So the acceleration of point Q is not zero, but the tangential is, and that re results in the fact that we know a sub c is then equal to r alpha, so the other big condition. And we've used those in, in uh, other, other instructional companions, uh, the simple hoist for sure. Okay, well that's the, a review of the kinematics of the rolling wheel. Now what about the dynamics? And we've got two possibilities, and I'll do that on the next page. Okay, the first uh, possibility, the first of two possibilities, again we call this kinetics or it's also dynamics, and again remember this is uh, rolling wheel dynamics. Uh, well you've got the drive wheel in which you've got an applied torque T about the, the axle. Okay, this could be the, the uh, rear wheel on a rear wheel driven car or a front wheel. Uh, but, but it is being driven by a, a, a torque, it has a weight, uh, etc. Well what does the free body diagram look like? Okay, for the free body diagram, then we have the weight going down through the center. We've got the normal force uh, pushing up going through the center. Uh, the torque T that's uh, uh, applied at the axle C. And uh, the friction force, therefore, has to be um, to the right because it uh, is what is associated with promoting or producing the translational acceleration, whereas the torque is there to produce the angular acceleration. Okay. So uh, as you apply the torque it will accelerate uh, rotationally and the friction force will make it accelerate to the right. Okay. Well let's look at the other possibility which is either the front wheel on a rear wheel drive car or the back wheel uh, on a front wheel drive car. Well, I call that the uh, push-pull wheel. Uh, it's either being pulled. Uh, this is kind of representing uh, the rear wheel of a front-wheel drive car. Of course, if it was the front wheel, the P would be actually on the other side. But, of course, you can translate that. So let's see what, uh, what its free body diagram looks like. 
Okay, for its free body, uh, you still have W down through the centroid and N up, um, and of course P is uh, given to you to the right, but now the friction force, notice, is to the left because it's got to produce the rotational motion, okay, these two connected here, and the, of course, the force P is uh, producing the uh, translational uh, acceleration. So very interesting here. You've got uh, friction forces to the right on a on this particular one and left here. So uh, got to be careful. Friction is not always uh, to the left or the right here. You have to have to make the things create. You have to have a force or a force at a moment to produce either the uh, translational acceleration or the rotational. Well, let's look at each of these uh, and and apply the equations of motion. Okay, repeating the free body diagram of the drive wheel, again you've got weight down, W up, the friction force is to the right to produce the translational acceleration, uh, the applied clockwise torque to produce the um, rotational acceleration. So let's look at the uh, equations of motion. Let's do the uh, forces first. Okay, well first we do some of the forces in X equal mass times acceleration of X, and of course we'll use our standard uh, system here, X, Y, and because torque is to the uh, clockwise, we'll make our positive moment clockwise. Okay, and so we have the only force is a friction force, that's why it's to the right. If you have acceleration to the right, you better have a force, uh, Newton's second law. Mass times acceleration, and uh, I'm going to make that W over G, as you're going to see. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the forces in, in the Y are zero because the acceleration, you're translating a straight line. So acceleration of A, uh, Y is equal to zero. So you get the simple N minus W equals zero. So therefore, N equals W if we need that uh, someplace. Well, now let's do the moments. And of course, uh, our only choice here really is point C because it's the center of, of mass. Uh, there is no fixed point, and there's not a point accelerating towards or away. Well, there's down here. But we're not going to use that. Remember, we, we use the center. So let's write that moment equation out. Okay, and if we take our moments about C, then the, of course torque is the is a couple, so it's a, a positive, and the uh, friction force though is a counterclockwise, and its moment arm is R, so you got minus R F of F equals the I about where you're taking moments, and in this case that's C, so we got I C. Uh, alpha. Of course, uh, could have a problem that this is a you know a cylinder, one half m r squared. But we're just going to leave it as i sub c because you have could have lots of different uh, i's here. So we're just going to leave it that way. Okay. Well, uh, we've got um, several unknowns here. What we need is a relationship between the acceleration and alpha, and that will be our last. That'll be our kinematics. Because what we had was uh, friction force is unknown. Of course, equation number two gives us N easily. Torque is uh, well, a given. We would know that. So we've got F of F, A sub C, and alpha. We need another equation. And uh, kinematics says, well, what do we know about AC and alpha? Well, we know the AC is equal to R alpha. That's why I reviewed that. Okay, so we now got four equations, and we're now ready uh, to solve. Let's just see what we could do by solving these. Okay, since uh, of course you could solve this any way you wanted to, and, and you're not going to have to do this in exam. We're doing this now, and you'll have the answers uh, available to you in the exam. I just want to make sure you uh, know where they come from. Well, uh, we're, at, we're typically we're given the torque. What is uh, what is the acceleration that we're after? Uh, so what we'll do is uh, from, we'll take f of f up there, which is w over g a sub c, and we'll take uh, alpha equals a c over r uh, uh, here from four, and put that into three. So so our equation now is T minus R uh, W over G A sub C equals I C times A C over R. And so we can do a little algebra. Uh, I'm not going to really show all that. I could. I've done it right here on my storyboard. But uh, we could uh, do a few steps here and then uh, put the uh, answer uh, on the next page. Okay, if we take uh, this term here and take it to the other side, uh, we've got IC over R times AC plus RW over G times AC, collect terms, and we've got those two times AC, so now we can solve for AC because, again, uh, the torque T would be known. So we'll do that on the next page. 
Okay, when we uh, take uh, the two terms to the other side, we've got uh, what looks like a complex equation. But remember, you're going to have this handy uh, in, uh, in your notes that you can take into the exam. So you're given the uh, torque in foot-pounds or newton meters. Uh, you can, you're either given or can calculate the I sub C. I'll tell you what that is, so 1 half mR squared. Uh, of course, that one of the R's would cancel there. You're given uh, either W or uh, in pounds, or you're given uh, mass, which of course W over G would be that in kilograms. So you can just come out with a number. Okay, you can just make the calculations for A sub C, and then where you're after uh, alpha, it's just A C over R. You of course be given that. So you've got that answer. The question now is our last unknown in the problem is uh, F of F. Okay, which is just equal to uh, w over g a sub c. Again, what you uh, calculate is a sub um, a sub c and the other. But but one of the main things that I want you to see is that this is not equal to mu s n. Okay, don't slam dunk uh, mu s n everywhere you see friction. If you if you did that in the exam, I guarantee you that's answer that's answer A. Okay, they'll <laughs> they'll get you. No no no. Only if you know you're at a maximum point is it mu s n or mu k uh, n if it is uh, if you know it is sliding. Okay, but what you do know is that this uh, friction force has to be less than mu s n or its maximum uh, value would be mu s n, and from that you can get the following. So we can write that down as the following, uh, f of f max, again from our friction coefficient stuff, f of f max is equal to mu s n, and of course from our other equation there, uh, n was equal to w, so that's equal to mu s w, and now if we put the you can see now why I had mass is W over G, right? So the maximum, of course, this is now AC max, not just any uh, maximum, uh, any value for A sub C. And notice that the W's cancel. And so what you end up with is that uh, A sub C max is equal to mu S G. And that is another take to the bank equation in this problem. They'll say, what is the maximum acceleration? Well, it is uh, mu S G. They give you the weights and whatever. Well, it doesn't matter. So here you have all the three things for a drive wheel. Uh, the acceleration based on the torque, the alpha uh, once you find the A sub C, and then if you need the, of uh, course, the friction force is equal to W over G times that A sub C, uh, not equal to mu S N. If they're asking for what's that friction force, answer A will be mu S N, and it'll be wrong. Okay, but then the maximum that you can get out of any sort of uh, system is mu S uh, mu S G. Okay. Well, I think that's uh, going to be enough here for um, uh, this instructional companion. I'll continue on the next one with the push-pull wheel. I think that will be very interesting, and then we'll compare the two sets of, of equations. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations.